Hi, this is David Glover with School Try. And I got a great question the other day from Justin, and he basically asked this. He says, Hi David, just wanted to sanity check something with you. I did my first lactate threshold run test this week. So, the, so a quick aside, the lactate threshold run tests are tests that we use in our training plans that allow our clients to set their training zones. And it's something they can do on their own um, with simply a, a stopwatch and a heart rate monitor um, or a GPS or a power meter if they're riding a bike. Justin then says, I was surprised at my age, 42, that I could get and keep my heart rate in the 180s and as high as 193 towards the end of the test when I really gunned it. Based on your guidance, I took my average heart rate at 10, 20, and 30 minutes for an estimated heart rate of 182 beats per minute. My question, does this sound high for my age? And also, should I do the cycling test separately or can I use these numbers from the treadmill test for biking as well? So Justin, that, that's a great question and the answer is, it depends. So the old formula 220 minus your age doesn't always work for everybody. And that formula basically says as you get older, your heart rate comes down, which it typically tends to do. However, if you're an athlete and you've been active your whole life, it may not come down that much. And some of us just naturally have higher heart rates and some of us have lower heart rates. It's not right or wrong, it's just the way it is. So for that particular test, other factors may have impacted you having a higher heart rate. So because you ran indoors on a treadmill, if you're running inside, if you didn't have a fan and it's warm, you may be sweating more. So if you're sweating more, you're your heart basically has to work harder so it's pumping faster to send more blood to the surface of the skin for cooling via sweat. Another factor that might affect your test, if you're dehydrated, you have less blood volume so you're, again your heart has to beat faster, so more beats to go a equivalent amount of speed than if you were fully hydrated and if you were running in cooler conditions. So I would definitely recommend doing a separate bike test from your run test. For most people, your bike heart rate zones for a given amount of effort or intensity, so if you're working at a very hard effort, typically you'll see higher heart rates with your run than you will with your bike. It's not always true. If you're a lifelong cyclist, you may see equivalent heart rates. One way to think about it is your heart has to work harder when it's running because you're holding your body upright and you're, you're moving it against gravity versus cycling you're just basically pedaling so your body's supported by the, the frame of the bike so you're typically working a little bit less of your upper body when you're cycling and more of your lower body so your heart can beat less. What's interesting with any of these field tests that you can do and if you, if you want an example of them you can find them at our enduranceworks.net website under resources. We have field tests for swim, bike, and run. What's interesting with these tests is how they change over time. And what you will see is that they will change. So for a given amount of effort, you know, typically if you're, if you're a non-athlete and you start training, you may see your heart rates actually drop because your body, your heart becomes, it's a muscle, it becomes stronger and beats faster. And for, and for others, you might actually see your heart rate go up and see yourself able to maintain a higher output so pedaling with more power running faster swimming faster because your body's better able to tolerate the increased intensity and stress